right. Um, good morning, uh, everyone. Welcome to uh, uh, our very early morning session, at least for me, I don't know. Uh, my name is Tony Savorelli. I work as a senior web architect at Pegasystems, a software company based in uh, Cambridge, Massachusetts. And this is Hector Lopez from Straker Lingotech. He will introduce himself in a second. Uh, we're here to talk about plugins. Um, it's going to be a two-part uh, presentation that stems from our uh, recent collaboration between our two, uh, well, between our web team, and by that I mean myself mostly, uh, and the <laughs> and the Drupal developers at Lingotech. Um, I think we can just get, we can just get started. It's going to be about. 30 minutes, depending on how fast I talk. <laughs> um, and then we'll leave room for questions. Did you just press it? Or? No, it's, it's already. Oh, okay. Hey, everyone. Um, so like Tony said, I'm Hector Lopez. I'm a developer for um, Straker Lingotech. It's a translation uh, services company that uh, has a uh, Drupal module, um, so um, and we've actually met some of you and invited you out here. So um, if you if you don't know who we are, we have a, a booth right right with the other vendors uh, next to the coffee in the bathrooms. So pretty easy to find, uh, kind of hard to see. Um, and also just ignore the shaking and the voice quivering for my first DrupalCon. I decided to. I uh, do trainings, uh, be a vendor, and come out here to speak. So, you know, trifecta. Um, all right, let's get started. All right, so there's different ways of uh, extending your module. Um, some of them are events and hooks. Um, events are based on, just like JavaScript events, they're based on events that you can subscribe to um, and modify your code that way. Hooks, um, they can modify your data, um, <clears throat> they allow external modules to, to modify your data um, and perform actions when they are invoked. Um, but again, you have to, to kind of be uh, attached to those hooks when they're, so that when they're invoked, your, your code can be run with them. Um, plugins are more of a design pattern um, that uses interfaces to extend and decouple those modules. Um, and as you'll see in some of our examples, you can extend multiple parts of the, the plugin pro, uh, pattern here. <clears throat> so in Drupal 9, there's um, three main parts of the, this design pattern. Um, there, and two of them actually combine. Um, so there's the plugin types. Um, and the type is the class that defines um, how plugins of a specific type um, are going to be discovered and, and and how they're going to be instantiated, and they work. The type uh, works together with the discovery um, to create the plugin manager, which we'll talk about in a bit. But the uh, discovery of the plugin is the process of finding the plugin uh, within the code base. Um, so that's uh, the specific type, um, so that you can have. Um, different types of discoveries. Um, the main, most common one is annotation, um, which uh, we'll have some exam an example of. Uh, there's also YAML-based discovery, um, which is mainly used for, for menus and views uh, and uh, links. Uh, there's also hook-based discovery. Uh, that one's mainly used for legacy support. Um, it's um, not very used very often. Um, and then there's also uh, static discovery, which is mainly used for, for testing code, so it's not used. Uh, it's used even less frequently than the other ones. Uh, and then the third part of the, the design is the factory, um, which is when you actually instantiate um, the plugins. Uh, <clears throat> So the, a, a very simple plugin um, has the, the manager, um, as we discussed earlier, which is the, um, the type and the discovery together. Um, 
So once you've had your manager defined and your plot and your discovery um, added to um, whatever you, you're using, which is either be annotation or YAML, um, then you create your plugin interface. And that's different from a plugin base. Um, it, the interface kind of tells um, the plugins what they're required to have. And um, you can extend that in any way. A lot of plugins use a plugin base as a kind of uh, base class that then you can extend, or you can just leave the interface by itself and have plugins extend that um, on their own. <clears throat> so, I'll show you an example of. Uh, so, this is an annotation um, in the uh, services um, file for LingoText. So, as you can see, you have there the class that. Um, that defines the plugin manager, and most plugins will have their parent as the default plugin manager. Um, so this is how you add the discovery. <clears throat> and then this is a, uh, an example of a pl plugin manager itself. Uh, as you can see, it's extending an, another uh, manager, and that manager um, is also extending uh, the default plugin manager itself. So that's one of the nice things about plugins, is that you can extend multiple parts um, of a plugin. You can extend manager, you can extend the annotation, you can extend the interface even. So it really reduces the, the duplication of code. Um, and it also helps, um, helps you override um, methods much easier. Um, so as you can see here, the, I'll kind of explain what the constructor does as well since it's not very clear right here since it's not the, <laughs> the parent manager. Um, so the, the first part, um, this works. Yeah, so right here, oh, here we go. So right here is the plugin subdirectory location. Um, the next part is the root paths that are keyed by the namespace um, to look for, for plugin implementations. And here is just the module handler. Um, and then you've got your, <clears throat> uh, your more optional, um, your more optional uh, parameters here. So this is the um, interface that the plugin will implement. And then this is the annotation um, that defines the plugins that will be used. Um, So this is an example of a base class uh, annotation. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, we've already defined everything here. You know, the, the ID, plugin ID, title, group, the, the weight, the form IDs, and the entity types. And we can even extend that annotation on its own. Um, this one doesn't add very much to it. Um, but if we needed to, we could add more um, to that annotation. Um, so that's uh, it's a very simple overview of how to start um, your your plugin manager and discovery out, and then from there you can go on to to define your plugin interface or your, your or your and your base base class. Um, but yeah. Why plugins? What's that? Why plugins? Is that yours or is it mine? Um, I never know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, it's never enough room in here. I'll get it. I'll get it. All right. Why plugins? Um, these are only a few of the reasons uh, why it, it's a good idea to use plugins uh, on your sites. Uh, first of all, uh, well, and, and why plugins exist as a design pattern in Drupal uh, 8 plus, let's call it, 9 plus at this point. Um, first off, uh, they allow for more customization when extending Drupal core, more than what hooks alone would uh, would allow. It's It's, more flexible, it uh, allows you to use less code. Um, 
and, and to just override the parts that you really need on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, in addition to Drupal core, uh, they also allow, and this is the main uh, reason we're doing this, they allow you to extend and decouple contributed modules uh, to, to, other, uh, to other modules. You can create a tiny little module or large uh, module that, uh, whose only purpose or whose main purpose is to uh, modify parts of a different module uh, to, to, to change functionality, uh, user interface, uh, you name it. Um, but also, if you're um, just like, like in the case of our uh, web team, you have many uh, websites, many. For me, there are only about eight, so it's not like a huge amount of websites. But even if you have more websites that have some uh, core functionality that pertains to all of them, you will also be able to provide uh, plugin types and plugin systems uh, within your own ecosystem to, uh, to specify more um, targeted functionality and, uh, and, and UI elements through the, through the plugins. So, when to implement a plugin or a new plugin type? Hopefully, well, you're not gonna have to. Uh, because in the end, core and the, the better architective modules, contrib modules, they already implement all, most of all or all uh, of the necessary, their necessary plugins, so you don't have to. Uh, for example, views, in, in the views, uh, in, in the Drupal 8 plus uh, views architecture, everything you see when you, when you go to the views uh, interface ultimately is a plugin. Uh, fields are plugins. Uh, filters are plugins, um, uh, everything else. Uh, I, contextual filters are also plugins uh, and all of that. Um, and it's, it's almost never necessary to add your own field plugin because uh, the, the entity system and, and, and views are great perfectly to provide everything you, you need. Field, the field system is also mainly composed of plugins, field types, uh, field elements, widgets, uh, formatters, they're all plugins and you can create your own to extend what the basic functionality is. On the other hand, you have, you can have, um, uh, sorry, I need to be able to bring my notes back. I mean, I know what I'm talking about, but still. Um, uh, you might have, on the other end of the spectrum, you might have uh, API only or API first modules, such as one of my favorites. It's clunky sometimes, but uh, Display Suite is one of my favorite uh, uh, modules of this kind, um, where which are not useful by themselves. Well, they are useful, but they're not doing much by themselves, uh, especially when it comes to creating new um, display field types. Um, uh, you're gonna if you've ever used Display Suite, that's the kind of thing you need to do. You're gonna have to implement plugins uh, dif of different types to, to, to achieve all your uh, d uh, entity display goals. But then there's somewhere in between where uh, a module provides some basic functionality, um, but you might want to extend that in a way that adapts more closely to the needs of your uh, specific application. Um, and this is where, where uh, our real world example comes uh, into play. So I actually did another talk a couple of days ago uh, about, um, oh, I gotta move it along. Well, it's just a title screen, but um, uh, about uh, the work that I've been doing for the past couple of years as a localization developer, uh, a Drupal localization developer at uh, Pegasystems. Um, where I found myself, I don't want to repeat the talk that I gave the other day, but I found myself uh, uh, needing to integrate to uh, the, the API integration uh, between our two main localization vendors. One is Lingotech, which has a very good integration, and the other one was a different vendor, which could be integrated, but it, it wouldn't interface directly with Lingotech. So, I found myself with the uh, Lingotech module, which is great, and it, 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 uh, it connects to Drupal very 
uh, very well, it allows us to connect to, to Drupal to the LinguaTech service very well. Um, but I also found myself with years of legacy, internal legacy code that was overriding what the LinguaTech module was doing in a way that was not unsustainable. Originally, we had one site that was being localized. Uh, we had the uh, prospect of localizing more and very complex ones at uh, that, um, and writing what we could call spaghetti code uh, to override forms on the fly and all of that w was not, um, wouldn't cut it anymore. Uh, so one of the things that I did was to create a, I always forget to advance one of those. Um, one, of, one of the things that I did was one of these options. <laughs> uh, so when you're faced with uh, a module that does what you want but doesn't do all the things that you want or doesn't do the things that you want exactly the way you want them to, you have a few options. The ideal thing is to start a collaboration. Um, sometimes it just works, we're here, so uh, the collaboration is started. But sometimes collaborating with people from different teams and different companies means uh, that you're gonna have to wait for things to happen. Contributing code takes time, code reviews take time, um, and so it might not always fit with, uh, with your internal timelines. Um, on, the other, on the other side of this, uh, the cumbersome and dangerous option of forking the module, I could have taken the LingoTech module, created my own little <laughs> LingoTech module, and uh, spend the rest of my life trying to keep up with all the changes that the, uh, that the original module would inevitably um, implement. Don't do that, don't fork if at all possible. Um, superficially less cumbersome is to patch the module. If you have only one site to handle, that's sometimes okay. Patching is a useful thing to know how to do, but unfortunately it takes uh, effort. It's, uh, again, uh, it forces you to keep up with, with all the changes, create, create new patches, and again, if you have only one site, patching is easy. If you have two, three, more sites that need the same patches all the time, especially when all these sites are uh, handled by different sub teams, it becomes uh, unwieldy and so not recommended. Uh, the happy medium is to extend an override and if the, mo the original module is extensible out of the box, great. If it's not, and frankly, it's almost impossible for a, for a good Drupal 8 plus module not to have extensible parts. So I targeted those extensible parts, meaning uh, forms, services, um, uh, mainly forms and services, created my own plugin types to, um, to make the parts of the system that I needed to be more flexible, more flexible, um, and, uh, and then contributed my own module which is how I got discovered by, <laughs> by the LingoTech guys. And uh, that's where really the collaboration started because at that point, um, what I did, it's not that I'm not self-glorifying here. It's not that what I did was so insanely uh, good that they just had to have it, but it, it was the embryo of a good idea uh, to, to help us, me, um, give back to, to, to the community, in, in, in this case, to the LingoTech team. Um, and, and yeah, and I, I think it's a, it's a great example of, of uh, the open source community uh, at its best. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry. So the reasons uh, I had to create uh, new, uh, new plugin systems, it, well, in this specific case, was to standardize the existing interface, uh, reduce code complexity and favor separation of concerns so that um, even if we did have some very specific internal only needs to say add a field to a, or add a column to a table or add a special filter that was only useful to us, we could do it without, uh, without writing bad code to just keep it uh, simple. And also, um, more useful to our, and you, or to our um, localization specialists in our case uh, was to easily add new functionality and interface elements 
and in my specific case, uh, allow us to integrate with yet another vendor without having the without needing without any need for the two vendors to even know anything about each other from a technical perspective I mean in person they do know, they know about each other um, so <clears throat> this is uh, is it fuzzy it's fuzzy here I don't know why um, th so this is uh, an example actually you know that's not an example this is an example of um, of a Lingotech administration form. It's the before, uh, before any of my code comes into play. This is taken from our, um, from PEG Academy, which, are, which is our tra uh, developer training uh, platform. Um, this is just to show you, it's an example. So this is, this is the, the way the table works. So this is a giant form list of entities that we can uh, perform operations on, send the, send the content to Lingotech for translation, bring it back, and so on. We have all the uh, content type uh, column, bundle column, um, the other fields that pertain to the status of the uh, translatable source and the translate, uh, translated targets and all of that. Um, and uh, <clears throat> this is not a view, by the way, uh, and the main reason is that in some cases, in the case of the Lingotech integration, uh, we might need to uh, display within the same table entities of different types, not entities, uh, uh, not different bundles, but really different entity types. Um, because especially, particularly in this form, we need to be able to display uh, related entities that are not nodes. And Views does not do that out of the box, and uh, frankly, we could have extended views, but that's a big can of worms. You know, nobody <laughs> should ever have to do uh, to open. So, so we went a different way. We um, every now and then we we wonder uh, whether we are rebuilding views. The answer is maybe, but also maybe not. Uh, so far, it works. Um, <clears throat> So, and uh, the next slide is, is the after. It's not quite the same, but my local decided to stop working the moment I had to really send in those slides, so sorry about that. Um, and also, I'm using the Jin admin theme and it doesn't play well with some of the customization to, uh, that we did to, our, to the UI, so we're working on that. It's, uh, it will be prettier. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so the difference, some of the differences that are more obvious are, for example, that I'll go back and forth. Uh, we added uh, back, forth, we added a, a entity ID field, for example, here. There are a couple of fields, content revision, or sorry, uh, what's it called? Current revision and latest revision, which are um, specific to content moderation. I've been doing a lot of work on the interaction between content moderation and content translation. I don't wish it on anyone. Um, so that's, that's part of it, those are new fields. Uh, the last field there, TMGMT, is part of that other integration that I, uh, that I added. All these columns that don't exist uh, in the before screenshot uh, are all uh, basically field plugins that, um, uh, that I was able to add thanks to uh, the addition of a plugin system to the to the uh, to the Lingotech module. Well, initially to my own contributed module that overrode the form, that then added the ability to uh, to discover these new plugins, specifically fields, filters up there, uh, not pictured, uh, and uh, uh, operations up in the bulk document management. Uh, part of as part of the of our collaboration. Some of these plugin types, specifically for the time being, fields and filters on this uh, on this interface uh, are a little bit of time being moved to the main module. So actually, the uh, version 4.x, let's call it, of the Lingotech module will include some of these new plugins, um, which has a very beneficial effect to to to. To, for me, really, which is I won't have to maintain them as closely as I have to, as I've had to so far. So that's great. Thank you, guys. <laughs> um, so, and um, Hector earlier showed you uh, an example of uh, one of these plugin types, which is the, 
it's a mouthful, so it's the Lingotech form component field uh, plugin type uh, in the form of, you saw the plugin manager, you saw the, the annotation for the plugin, and I'll just go back very quickly. This should be sleeker, but it's not. Um, so this is the, again, this is the annotation. So what the annotation for this plugin type does uh, is provide the ID of the plugin that's necessary, the, the title, um, which in the case of a, of a table, of that table's column is the, becomes the header of the, um, uh, of the, of the column. Uh, then the group, not actually needed in this case, I won't go into it, the weight is weight. We've all seen weights, presumably. If I say weight, is anyone? Okay, okay. Um, and the form IDs are, um, are again, uh, are a way for the plugin manager to know when to display a certain, when, when, to, dis well, when to discover and when to display certain plugins uh, and entity types, again, uh, if we want to target specific entity types for a certain plugin, we can do that. Um, <clears throat> and this is specific to this plugin type. You have other plugin types, of course, that are not related to forms or anything uh, that will have different properties. The annotation class will tell, will, will allow you to, to define what the properties of the plugin are. And um, going forward to the example, this is what the plugin um, looks like. Uh, this is the plugin for the entity ID, so the first column that appears on this table here. It's very simple, it doesn't do much more than just grab the uh, entity ID from, from the entity and just spit it back out on the page. Uh, but this is what the annotation looks like. It's in a comment. We are saying, we're telling the system that this is a Lingotech form component field uh, plugin. And these are the properties that we saw in the annotation class. So the ID, um, the title, the weight. I really want the weight to be low. And the form IDs on which uh, this column will appear. Um, in this case, I actually targeted all the possible, well, actually, it's not all the possible. Oh, shut up. No, nope, that's not true. Uh, I targeted the forms that I needed. So, um, and then, uh, we have a couple of uh, methods here that get the job done. So, uh, actually, this is old code. So, some of this is not actually, in, but in any case, the get header allows us to, to display um, either the title as it appears here or, the, or a custom title. Uh, get data allows us to get the data. Um, sorry, There's, I can't say any simpler than that. Uh, and then sort um, is, a, is a way to provide the, the tables, uh, the, table, the table column sortability. So, um, and in fact, I think if we look at it, it's not super clear, uh, and also this is just a screenshot, but these are clickable and we should be able to sort the table. Um, I think, why is it not showing? Well, there was another slide, presumably, with a series of links, and we don't have that slide for some reason. Great job, PDFs. Um, so, uh, presumably, we can provide that. I don't know if this, we'll make sure that if the slides are made available, we'll, we'll, they'll, they'll have all the content that they need to have. Um, so, this is, this is all we have. This is, uh, this is uh, the, the, I think the main takeaway from all of this is plugins are awesome. I, I know it's very, uh, plugins are really great. Um, they are a little daunting, especially if you come from uh, a Drupal 7 mindset. Uh, but many things in Drupal 8 plus are plugins, including entities. They are defined as plugins. So that's a very useful thing to know. Um, it makes collab uh, it makes uh, uh, plugins make module extension much easier. Uh, it makes uh, they make collaboration much easier because uh, you don't need to necessarily rely on somebody else's work to get your job done and get to the to the 
place where you, where you want to get. Um, and so they are really useful uh, and indispensable, really, not just useful concept to know more about. That's it. Any questions? Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions? I'll, uh, why don't you come up here so that we can? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. So the the microphone is not portable, oh, so. Oh, sorry, it's not on because no, no. yeah. Ah, uh, hello. Thank you so much. Uh, you were talking that with a great architecture and Drupal core. We are using plugins, for example. And you also mentioned that the mindset with Drupal 7 was not using, for example, plugins because it wasn't available, of course, with hooks and so on. Uh, what do you think about this possibility? Because, for example, one, one point that is not so good is because we have a lot of possibles to do the same thing. So, for example, in Drupal 9, we can use plugins, that is the best approach, in my opinion, of course, but there is a way to continue using like Drupal 7, so it's like a problem. Uh, so we need to change the mindset. Uh, so for example, now we can use plugins, and it's better, and after learning that, we can start doing that. Uh, what is your opinion, the first point, uh, about the main, a lot of possibilities to do the same thing in Drupal? And the second one is, uh, do you have some recommendation about how to, to, to teach our junior developers, new developers, about how to use plugins and something like this, just to recommend? Well, I'll start from the end. Uh, I think junior plugins, or junior plugins, come on. <sighs> junior developers are the least of your problem because they are learning, and so it's easier to just uh, send them off on the right path. Um, I, I think, so I've been working with Drupal for 16 years. I started in, with 4.7. There was nothing like this. And getting to embrace plugins um, was not easy it, because it was just a it's different mindset. So I think uh, targeting uh, more seasoned developers is really what, what you really uh, would have to do. Um, and ultimately, it's the direction that Drupal has taken. It's not a direction it's taken. It has taken this, this direction. Uh, hooks, I suspect, eventually will disappear, go away. So I don't have a recommendation because if you want to keep working with Drupal in an efficient and uh, uh, mind-saving way, I, I think, uh, it's important to, to, to do a lot of internal almost advocacy to, to make sure that everyone is aware that there are new ways to do things. Um, at uh, PEGA, we do a lot of, I don't know where you work and how large your team is, but we do a lot of uh, internal demos, like we have almo almost weekly uh, demos about one part of the technology or other, and sometimes about something else, which is also important. Uh, but it's important to make sure that everyone knows what's new, what's coming, what the advantages are, and that's my two cents, really. Hector, do you have opinions? Uh, well, uh, just a little bit, because, um, so I started with Drupal a couple years ago, so um, plugins was new to me at the time, too, because I started with Drupal 7, so I was more familiar with hooks. Um, but I think, um, like Tony said, it helps to have your more seasoned developers also be um, willing to, to change their mindset. Um, the, the developer who trained me on Drupal 8 and plugins um, was more willing to, to, to do it the plugin way um, instead of being stuck with, with hooks. So it really depends on the mentor of the, of the new developer. Anyone else? I was just curious is when you, it becomes a collaboration with the people that did the original module, how, is it easy to, like, can you bring the plug-in architecture into the module? Is that hard or you have to do a lot of conversion? Or? Uh, it, yes. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Um, well, in the end, uh, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm going to do this because it's a little easier for me. Um, stay. Uh, the well, each developer has their own way of doing things, and they're all mostly correct, I think, uh, except my own. Um, so, you know, there's always going to be a, a process of adapting what the, 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 in this case, the specific plugin system or, or several plugin types uh, will, um, adapting the way they work and they look and, and they're architected to the destination module. I mean, if you're just writing a new module, you can do pretty much whatever you want, but that's, that's communication, mostly, I think. Uh, and we have been communicating for a couple of months, three months at this point, and it's, it's, a, it's a long process, especially because it might not be your main focus on your daily work. Um, uh, yeah, I, but I think in the end, we're, if, if we're all clear on the, on the path to take and, and what, we're, what we really want to achieve, talk about it, do code review, mm, discuss, and nothing is insurmountable in the end, so. Uh, but yeah, but it's, it's not like something that happens overnight for is sure. There a package way so like if someone can find that module, like you know that your plugin is available, and that might solve their problem? Or, like, I don't think so, yeah. I might be wrong, but yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how Christian, I mean, we were in touch as companies, but I, I'm not sure, like some, one, one day he just uh, slacked me and he's like, oh, I saw your module, and I'm like, oh no. Um, <laughs> busted. Um, I think it just helps, um, you know, working together as a community, um, trying to be aware of what, uh, who, who is using your module, um, and, just, and just going through and seeing if anyone else has come up with any contributed modules that extend or enhance your own module. Sometimes it's just somebody opening an issue saying, hi, I created this, and, well, if you're on the other, if you're on the other uh, side of, of the issue and you're the one who's extending somebody else's module, I think the best way is just to create an issue and at some point, which I would have done, frankly, but uh, time is always. Anyone else? I'm gonna take it as a no. So thank you again for uh, joining us today. I hope uh, we were informative and somewhat entertaining as well. So have a good last day of DrupalCon.